Hello YouTube, welcome back from my stoop. Um, I'm smoking a, a, a true African blend, South African jock of the Bushveld, in my Nording, uh, Nording pipe, handmade pipe, and uh, I'll give you a re review on the next video on uh, on this tobacco. Um, yeah, but uh, today is my last video in my series Who Am I? and also the last one in the sub-series of what I believe. I think by this time now you know what I believe and you know who I am so I don't, uh, I'm not gonna bore you anymore with uh, some of my views. Although I cannot promise that because um, I might, I might just one day again pop up and say, you know what, uh, what you know, this is what I'm thinking now. So, but for now, this will be my last uh, in this series. So, um, so today will be about what I believe around the Word of God or the Bible. There's a slight breeze, so I'm struggling to keep this thing uh, on a nice puff level, but uh, that's fine. Right, so I believe that the Bible is indeed the Word of God. Um, some people like to add some other descriptions and words to it like um, authoritative and infallible and all those kind of things. Um, I don't want to go, you know, I don't want to go there because there's too many discussions and debates around exactly, you know, how infallible and how authoritative and not what, uh, but but that, with that I do not say that it's not authoritative. But let me explain how I see the, the Bible as being the Word of God. Um, I believe that God indeed inter, uh, is, inspired the Bible writers to write whatever they've written. But I do believe that we need to take into consideration each Bible writer, the context, the person, uh, who he is, you know, his background, his situation, his his viewpoints, his reason for writing, um, to whom did he write, etc. And also the genre. I mean, uh, you know, just as you will receive a letter from someone or an email, um, and you will read it differently than a poem, that, than someone writing you a poem, uh, you know, it's just different. Um, all the lyrics of songs, they do not fit into normal sentence, normal paragraph, normal article style of, of, of writing. Because they need to fit into a certain rhythm and music. And I think that is crucial to understanding the Bible and the Word of God. Um, for example, I, how I see it is, uh, for example, Matthew. Matthew was Matthew. He was a uh, you know, a, 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 a Jew, uh, and he was working in the toll gates, so he was obviously not in the, the most favorable position where people in those days were. And he wrote with a certain perspective of trying to convince people that Jesus is indeed the Messiah. And that's why he starts with a long geneal genealogy and, you know, descendants register and things like that. But look at Mark. At, at, uh, Mark. Mark's got a whole different view. He, he started with Jesus' ministry. He left out all those, those uh, early years. Look at Luke. Uh, Luke. Luke was a doctor. Uh, it seems as if Luke came more out of the heathen uh, or the Roman Greek Hellenistic area than, than the Jew. Uh, so obviously for him the... the um, the wonders around healing and, and those kind of things were, were you know, were fantastic, and uh, and he wrote more about that. 
and his mission was to write to the, the Gentiles uh, and the Greeks. So different perspective. Now, some people want to take those and put them all together and say, you see, but because these four wrote differently about the same story, therefore the story cannot be true. That's not true. Uh, when you write a story and when I write the story about the same story, if you give a, a, your interpretation of what happened with 9-11 or with apartheid or whatever history or World War II, and I write my perspective, they might not include exactly the same thing because we are different people, we are different thinking, different backgrounds, and we write with it maybe with a different perspective. And I think we need to, to take that into consideration when we read and interpret the Bible. Now some will say, yeah, but then you, you make it less authoritative um, because then you choose what you like and what you don't like. Not at all. I'm just making sure that I'm understanding what was said 2,000 years ago because surely Luke didn't write to me in 2015. He wrote to the people and the world between 50 and 100 after, after Christ. But it does say a lot for us today, as long as we understand what he wanted to say at the time. Um, and that is how I see it's God's words. It's, it's God's word because he, he took people and he used them and he used their personalities and their background to write to us and giving us his revelation, what he wanted us to be understood and to be told. Um, so yeah, I do believe that, that the Bible is indeed God's word. The other thing which I also think which is very important is that we as Christians should never use the Bible to bash someone else. And unfortunately the reason why I'm putting it in here is because I've seen it. Um, and I don't think that was ever the intention of the Bible to be. If you know, The Bible is not there to do Bible bashing, to, to get to someone and to hit them correct or to, you know, to, to try to convince them of their wrongdoings. Um, I don't think that that is really the purpose uh, of the Bible. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very I'm very uh, I'm looking for the English word. Uh, can't find it. So let me just say that I don't think we should ever uh, resolve resolve to Bible bashing. And lastly. Um, I do also think that when we do read the Bible and when we do try and interpret what was said 2,000 years ago and how to read it today and how to apply it today, we also need to take into account that there are certain, there are certain truths that are absolute. Um, doesn't matter time, environment, people, here, doesn't matter what, it's an absolute truth. For example, you should shall not or you should not kill someone. That's an absolute truth. That doesn't matter in which culture, in which world, in which time you live, in which, you know, it, it's, it's, you shouldn't do that. But whether you should wear a hat or not a hat, or, you know, those, those kind of things, I don't, really don't think that is an absolute truth, which should be applied for all people in all ages or across the world forever. Um, I don't think that was the intention of Paul, for example, where he wrote about that. Uh, I do think we need to understand that there are certain things that doesn't, whether I, I, I wear a hat or not a hat, or whether my wife wear, wear a dress on, or, or pants, really that doesn't take away the golden thread and message of good news which God intended for us from Genesis to Revelation. So. To me, I normally, what I do is I try to, 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 to try and determine does this affect the good news, the story of God? Does this uh, make, you know, make or break the good news? And really, I don't think you know, whether a woman should speak in, in the congregation or not uh, doesn't take away the good news and the story of God. Obviously, Paul wrote for the time he wrote, he, he, he wrote that, that letters, and in the time it was as, you know, that was the cultural in, engagement. Look at slavery. 
they Paul accepted slavery as as the cultural environment, and he spoke about slaves and you know working in a in a working relationship with your masters and your slaves. No one today will will dare say that slavery should be applied again. So yeah, we need to understand and we need to make sure that whenever we apply the Bible, that we do not apply a cultural slash uh, yeah a cultural truth and make it an absolute truth, uh, as if it is applicable to everyone, everywhere, for, forever. Uh, because that's when Bible bashing comes to the fore easily. Um, another thing which I also think which is important is that we should never, never, and never use the Bible as an, either an, an history book or a, uh, or a, a science manual or, or things like that. I don't think the Bible was ever intended to be like that. I cannot try and determine whether, you know, how God created and, and how the, the, the universe came together through the Bible. Yes, I, I may get some pointers and some uh, historical descriptions through the Bible, but I do not think that we should use the Bible as either an historical handbook to try and determine history and, and how things developed, uh, or as a science handbook. Um, so, yeah, you know, by, for me, by saying that I do believe that the Bible is the Word of God, I'm, it's also authoritative to me, but I do, and I do plead and believe that we, that we really should make an effort to try and understand the Bible better than, that the, than what we did for, for many a years. Uh, one of my examples will be, for example, apartheid. Um, the Bible was used to, to show that apartheid was actually right and should be applied to, you know, to our, our history. Only to find, you know, years later that it was a, a, a big mistake. Um, so, and it's because we, we didn't interpret the Bible in terms, uh, correctly in terms of, of, of those, you know, those parameters which, which, I, which I explained. Um, yeah, so that in short is what I believe. I do believe that the Bible is authentic, it's the authoritative word of God, but I do believe that we also need to understand the golden thread and to follow that golden thread and to make sure that the Bible tells us the good news, the story of God's interaction with men. Not to bash people and to, you know, to chase them to hell or to determine their, their, pre, you know, their, their end state of being but to, to, to tell the story of how God really loves us as human beings and how He, he wants us to be, uh, to be loved and to, be, to understand where we fit in, into, his whole, uh, into His whole plan. So yes, um, that is my view of what I believe, um, and what I believe in terms of the Word of God. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed the series, I hope you understand and know me better. Um, and again, you know, please add your comments and if you don't, don't agree with me, that's cool, that, no problem. That's how we understand and how we learn and how to expand. And um, yeah, so I'm not saying that I know everything and I'm not saying that I've got the last and the only truth, I'm just saying this is where I am and what I understand and how I try to live by it. And, uh, and that's, that's, uh, that's my view. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your kind comments. From the next video, I will again review, do some South African tobacco reviews. And uh, I enjoyed this and I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your day and puff away uh, from my stoop. Thank you. Bye-bye.